Hello and welcome back to another episode of Tiger Talk, the official podcast of Workshop Town Football Club. It is episode 14, we're starting to get through these episodes pretty quickly now. We're uh, back onto a more regular schedule where we're reviewing two games if this midweek, some you know, weekly updates. Uh, I'm joined by Luke as always. Uh, Luke, coming out of the ground on, uh, on Tuesday night, there was a, a, a real sense of excitement, wasn't there? Yeah, I mean, uh, it was the fan- best performance of the season by a mile. Uh, the goals were fantastic. There were two sending offs. It, 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 it had everything. Apart- I mean, it were it were it were a good display from Workshop, and the f- there were a lot of smiles on a lot of faces uh, coming out the ground. Obviously, we'll talk more about that um, further on in the episode. Uh, but here's what's coming on today's show. We've got to talk about Stocksbridge first, the trip to Bracken Moor, uh, the Jamie Vardy stand. Uh, then we'll talk about Sheffield. Uh, we'll also talk about the two new faces in the squad uh, and their impact on the team so far before looking ahead to Saturday's game against Brighouse Town at the Windsor Food Service Stadium. So let's get into it. So just before we get into today's episode, we want to make light of uh, In Sam's name. If you remember a couple of episodes ago, a few months now, um, a group of lads got on a walk, did 29 miles walking from Sandy Lane to Lincoln United's Ashby Avenue to raise money for um, the, after the passing of Sam Fisher uh, for his repatriation and funeral costs, uh, they raised I think over five grand in the end, and it was a tremendous effort. Obviously, Paz and and Whitey got on board, and now uh, Richard McHugh, who was the leader who started the walk, and then obviously the group came in. He as and and the others have set up a, a men's mental health group called In Sam's Name. Uh, they do for, uh, fortnightly uh, meetings at the Edge on Plantation Hill in Kilton, um, and the next one is Thursday the third of February. Luke, you went to the meeting last Thursday. Um, how firstly, how was it? And obviously that transpired into a walk. So so how was the how was those two? Yeah, um, the great turnout last Thursday. Um, Fourteen people were. Uh, I think the last two times, I think there's been seven, so we've, we've doubled the amount of people. Uh, I think everyone come out of there feeling good about themselves, which was great. Uh, there were some new faces that I've not seen before, which was which is what it's all about getting getting people involved. Um, so there was the walk was the following Sunday. Uh, I think there was a few more people on that walk, but there were people that didn't come to the group sessions that that come to the walk and the walks we we we've, we we want to create different environments for people not just to sit in a room at all and, and talk in a group because it isn't like we've mentioned for everybody people prefer being out in the outdoors talking with the mates and having a walk and just having a good time you know and just and just talking about things you know and uh, i just think it was uh, it, it it was a positive to it's 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 being all positive uh, it's going well uh, and hopefully it continues to grow. And obviously men's mental health is a, a massive thing, as a, a thing at the minute. And here at Tiger Talk podcast and also the Works at Town Football Club, we're proud to be you know, promoting the In Sam's Names group. Um, and, you know, if, if, if you need a chat and, you know, things are, are looking down, there are brighter days ahead, get into the group, get in touch with Richard McHugh and, you know, just come and talk it out. It's, it's, a, it's a brilliant uh, evening. Ah, I guess we'll start with Saturday's game. Uh, Stockbridge Park steals two, one works up town. Obviously, a couple of weeks ago, it was um, you know reminiscing about uh, Vaughan Redford's last minute winner. Unfortunately, we succumbed to another what uh, to a defeat uh, this time with a last minute goal. Um, Luke, looking at the first half, 
the opening 10 minutes were, seemed a little bit worrying for us. Uh, we seemed to be rather exposed and open. What were your thoughts on the start? Yeah, I, I thought uh, they caught us by surprise. I mean, Seb made a couple of good saves early on uh, to to keep keep them at bay. I thought, um, yeah, I thought, I, I thought they kind of. I don't. I didn't think we expected them to uh, start off as they did, but I, I thought we grew better as the first half went on. To be fair, uh, what was your thoughts? Yeah, definitely. As soon as we sort of settled into the tie. After two games where we, you know, it took a lot out of us in terms of the Dunstan game, mentally that's going to be challenging to come from. And even the cup, getting into a cup final would have brought a little bit of a high, but we had to really work for it against Rossington. Um, and and then when we did stamp our authority, I know we had we've created some really good chances. Uh, Cody Cromack went close. I think he jinked into the area. Liam Hardy, obviously, always is threatening. He had a couple of really good chances, just couldn't find the target. Uh, Makarad too saved uh, by Eddie Hall, who had a, a fa- Eddie Hall, not the not the uh, world's strongest man, Ed Hall. Uh, he made some really good saves, um, and you know it, it, it's it looked promising, and it looked like you know if we could just get that goal before half time, things would you know probably settle in better for us. I don't know if it was um, it felt similar to sort of the start of the season where we were creating these chances, just could not find that clinical edge, Luke. Yeah, uh, one game that springs to mind with that from early on in the season was like Osset Town, where we just created so many chances. I mean, and just come, we just couldn't put ball in back at there. I mean, we but like say the the chances you, you've named there. I mean, they were you're talking three, four goals, the uh, scoreable chances, and we didn't score any. And it's it, you know, it's it's a bit of a head scratcher, isn't it? When you when they're playing the because they played lovely football, it were it were great football towards the end of the first half. Um, but yeah, I, I just thought Stocksbridge, to be fair to him, I thought they defended well. They made it certainly in the second half. They made it harder for it wasn't as easy to get through them in that in the second half um, as it was in the first. So credit to Stocksbridge for uh, making it hard for us. Yeah, let's let's go into that second half. Um, obviously, it didn't start the best. Obviously, we hit the bar through Liam Hardy, um, and then Luke Mangum scored for the third time against us this season. So he certainly found uh, you know a bit of a, a lucky club to play against. Uh, but it, it was really poor defending, I think, from us. More, more you know, like statues. Um, the positioning of the back four, I think, Deegan was late to it, and uh, Vaughan covered, but. He he was tucked a little too in and allowed uh, Luke to Luke Mangum to have the freedom of the back post just to tap in. Um, let's focus on uh, the equaliser then, because it was such a beautiful header from Ira, wasn't it? Yeah, uh, I think after they scored, we kind of got a spring of step game um, that we, we it got us going uh, to push forward and and the header was just brilliant I mean I wasn't expecting a header like that you know because uh, I mean just I just wasn't expecting it from where he was because it was he was so far out and it was a great header over the keeper it were it, it were like it was as powerful as a shot a bit like um ex Wednesday player knew when he used to head it it were like a it were that powerful it were, it were like a shot coming at a goalkeeper and I bet it's a nightmare for a goalkeeper that to deal with Something like that, and it it was good in front of the workshop fans as well, which was great. I didn't think the Kosovan God would get a mention ever on this podcast, but (laughs) you know, uh, to any Wednesday fans that are you know listening, they'll they'll be happy with with that his inclusion. Uh, But yeah, the 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 ball in from uh, Lewis Butroyd was was absolutely sumptuous, and I think the but the the header itself, you know, he's he's coming away from goal. He's had to sort of steer it back across goal and the the goalkeeper Hall as we mentioned made some cr- incredible saves in that first half yeah. was at full stretch and you know to pick that, that that was the only place he could really put it in and he found it and I think overall we'll, we'll talk more about the signings later but overall it was, it was a good performance from him uh, unfortunately we didn't capitalise on that we we allowed them to sort of you, you know you said that we, we struggled and uh, stocks which went into us I think what yeah. they did was more sit in and absorb what we tried to do we were pumping balls into the area they was heading it away yeah uh, Sam Finlow was absolutely tremendous as a, p- a pivot for them yeah. um he was just picking up the ball loose balls and spraying it out to the front three which 
uh, I think consisted of Crofts, Mangum and uh, Josh Nodder. Um, and they were just a nightmare to deal with. And yeah. ultimately, that's what led to the to the equaliser. Um, and it, it was just it, it was a, a real sickening feeling, wasn't it? Yeah, it, yeah, it was. Um, I, I thought certainly towards the last last part of the second half, I thought they we, we they, they just they were just pinning us back, weren't they? And you could see it coming, couldn't you? For for uh, for quite a while, um, I think Ross Goodwin played well. He was good at work something. I think he showed his quality in that second half. I thought he. he he made it. He made it. He made it hard for his midfield to to play out. You know, he was on us all the time, and you do when you play you against your former clubs, don't you? But um, yeah, I just thought. I thought after we scored that equaliser, I thought we just we just the the spring went and we were, we, we were pinned back and we just couldn't get out. And when we did, it were uh, we didn't really create much, and it was just it was a shame really because I thought when we equalised, you were expecting us to continue that. High, uh, high tempo, but I don't think uh, it just didn't work out, did it? No, definitely not. We normally do switch on, and and that's yeah, it's sort of our speciality in t- in one way yeah. where <laughs> we need a goal to sort of spur us into life. We need to concede a goal to spur us into life, and it just didn't happen for us. I, I, I suppose when you're sort of teetering on the edge like that, one day it's going to bite you in the backside, isn't it? And and it, it ultimately it did. Um, I have to give credit. We mentioned about, you know, Brees Fielding. He was a, a great defender yeah. um, in, in our last podcast. Um, but who knew from a centre half he could turn as well as he did uh, and finish. Um, it, just unfortunate. I mean, again, the, it was a little bit of naivety from, from the back line um, and a little bit of just switching off again. And I think Paz stressed this uh, in the in the post-match interview and I have to, I tend to agree with him. I, 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 th- I feel like it, it, we should have come at least, uh, come away with at least a point there, yeah. considering the chances that we created. Yeah, I, I, I thought uh, it was an even match, weren't it? You know, I thought throughout the game, you look, I think we dominated certain periods, they dominated certain periods, and I, I think it was unlucky. You can't really, you couldn't really pick a winner out, really, I thought, but you could just feel in that last 10 minutes when it's more tense, I think they kind of just, Chuck the kitchen sink at us, didn't they? At the, at the end, and got the goal, and uh, it, it was a tight game. It was a good game. Uh, it could have gone either way, uh, but I just think, yes, I, I thought if we'd have continued that second half with the momentum, I think we would have probably gone on and won the game. But it, it's that typical game, isn't it, where you, you you you're bombarding forward to try and get that winner, and then they hit you on the counter and. That's it. You, you, it's too late then isn't it, to get an equaliser, and it was just—it was a sickening blow, mate, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean, let let's just hope that it's not one of these games that we're looking back at the end of the season and thinking, you know, this is—if we hadn't have done this, then this could have happened or that. I mean, hindsight is a beautiful thing in football, especially. But you know, at the end of the day, if you don't put away your chances, you don't deserve to get anything out of the game. Yeah. If we had have got something out of the game. I think would have been massively thankful for Seb Malkowski. Um, just wanted to mention him before we hear from Paz because I thought, uh, especially after the what happened with Adam Watson at Sheffield FC, I feel like the preceding games after that he's looked a, l- a little bit not like himself. He's looked at you know there's been a, uh, one or two mistakes or um, you know just not not Seb, um, but. Especially Saturday, then going into Tuesday night, Seb certainly looks back to his best now, doesn't he? Yeah, he's uh, he, he seems he, he's a solid keeper. You know, he he, he takes no nonsense. He, he commands his defence as well. You always hear him shouting, which is great. And his defence, that's fantastic because you've got someone from behind just shouting. You're know, seeing seeing the seeing the game from a different angle, which will help help the defence out. Uh, it, get, it it just makes everyone confidence. Uh, when when you've got a keeper like that, um, uh, like you said, I think he's had a, a lot of ups and downs this season. Certainly recently, with like you said, the Adam what the Adam Watson uh, injury, uh, you could see him on the halfway line with his hands on his hips, just worried, and that I felt for him really, really because he, he must have affected him mentally, you know, because it's his mate, it, it's his it's his teammate, and you know he, he'll be worried for his well being and. 
you know, it, it, it would have had an effect on him. And uh, like you say, I think after a couple of games of coming back into it, I think he's back to his best and hopefully he'll keep performing for works up towards between now and the end of the season. So let's hear from Craig Parry uh, and his thoughts after the Stocksbridge defeat. Thank you, Apache. I think I don't think we've actually played too bad, to be fair. Uh, on another day, if we took our chances first, I think it could have been a different game. We've hit the bar in various, and they, they, you know, I'm sure their manager is going to come out and probably say the same thing about their guys because they, you know, they had some clear cut chances. And I think it was, I think it was a game of really who were going to score first would probably go on and win it. But I don't think we deserve to lose in in in, in that fashion at the end. Um, but I am I, I am disappointed with the result. Do you think, obviously we said it at the start of the season more, but again, just missed chances that final bit in the final third? I think, I think, I think it's the final bit in both boxes. It's exactly what I've just told them there. I think, I think from the, from their lads, they've, 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 they've died for it in both boxes. They've, they've thrown the bodies at it, you know, and, and, and got the, you know, the goals from three, four yards out and, and stuck in the net. We've had balls pinging across our net in the back. We haven't died for it in, 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 the, in, in their box. And in our box, we, we, we're, too, we're too lazy defending. The ball gets cleared out. We, we, we don't pick up. You know, unbelievable ball in, by the way, by by their guy at the end. It's a great ball in. But he, again, there's three or four just stood there. He, we just we leave it to someone else, and that's the difference. They, they've they've wanted to die for it in both boxes, and we hadn't. And obviously, a couple of times there, we've mentioned about our missed chances. Seb saved us on a couple of occasions after yeah. a tricky few weeks that he's had. Yeah. Um, he certainly looked like he was back to his best. What were your thoughts on Seb's performance? Yeah, I thought Seb played well today. I thought he did. I thought he, he, he did. He did. He did well. Like, I've got no complaints at, at, at Seb's Seb's door. But we're a team, and we've got to, you know, we win together, we lose together. And uh, like I said, I don't think the lads in there deserve to lose. They didn't deserve to lose. But it's it's a it's a frustrating one because you know I think I, I think it could have been a different result on a on another day. Obviously, two positives, uh, two good debuts for uh, Lewis and yeah. uh, Iroh. Let's start with the latter. Obviously, scoring a great header. Yeah, uh, certainly will <laughs> please the works out fans yeah. with his start. Uh, what were your thoughts on his performance and also how uh, getting the the signing over the line? Yeah, I'm happy to get the sign over the line. You can see he brings different towards. He's got raw pace. Uh, and he obviously scares teams to you know to death. We we we're pacing behind, so it's something that we haven't got really in our forward line. So he, he's, we've been looking quite a bit. So that, that's quite a positive. I thought the goal for us were, were really well goal, and, and you know from from Lewis on the overlap, who I thought had a, again had a, had a great debut. You know a, a great quality ball in. We are in at the back post, heading it in. We a great header. So I, I've got no complaints with, with both the guys today. They've come in the first time. Um, you know picked up the mantle of. Of the positions and, and and tried the best to to make the result you know a positive result and, and to be fair they played the part in 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 in, in a goal for us and and I thought they both done well. And yeah, you've touched a little bit on Lewis there. Just how good was his deliveries into the area today? I thought Lewis had a great game. Yeah, I think he's, I think he's, I think more importantly, I think his 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 decisions when to go and when not to go. It's obviously we like our fullbacks to, you know, to to. To give us width and, and be positive, but I thought his decision making and when to go and when to get round Macca and, and Aaron there at the end, it was was brilliant and he timed it well for the goal and a great ball across and and uh, and he's done well. I think uh, you can see the the quality he's got. As Craig finished on, um, we he, he, uh, he was impressed with the two new faces from Saturday and we certainly came away uh, thinking that as well um, and you know. <laughs> our, our sort of um, thoughts signified more after Tuesday night's game so there will be a little bit of overlap before we go into Sheffield FC but let's hone in on them uh, starting with uh, Lewis Butroyd. Uh obviously we talked a little bit about him last week we said that we were, we were excited to see what he would bring to the side um, especially with Connor Smythe going as Paz said he, um, he it wasn't necessarily um, because Connor Smythe had gone, he was looking at him, you know, for several weeks to to bring him in and strengthen the side and add competi- uh, competition into that area. And alas, um, it's just worked out that Lewis has slotted straight in, and and you would say that he's he's slotted straight in. It looks like he's been there all season. Yeah, he's been brilliant. Um, I mean, the first two games I've seen him in, he's he's been outstanding. 
he's uh, he's just as good defensively as he is going forward. Uh, it gives us that good balance on that left hand side. The overlapping runs are fantastic. I remember Craig saying after the the Sheffield game, you uh, can tell he's played at high level because of how he times his runs and that true what you could just see he, he, every time he ran forward it was a perfect run it was wasn't too late wasn't too wasn't too early you know it he, he, he knew where he, when he wanted to go and when and, and like what time when he needed to go and where he needed to go to and i just think that would just uh, yeah it, it was great to see and i i think he's going to be a massive massive player for us this season um yeah and um, I, i'm really happy with the signing that he's made uh, the start he's made at the club the it, it's it's easy to go on after two after two performances, but yeah. certainly I think every single probably ninety percent of his deliveries that have gone into the area, whether that be from open play or set pieces, always seem to find a works up body or a works up head and and, and really challenge um challenge the opposition and obviously a couple of them deliveries caused uh, wreaked havoc on on Tuesday night. Um, I think goals came not directly from them, but in the aftermath at least. And I think with that good pedigree on board, he he, he's certainly going to look to. um, Obviously, Connor was a great servant for the club and has been a a great lad for over his couple of spells. But you know, soon soon we'll we went from worrying about what what would be next to you know that's that's fine. We've 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 moved on and we've got another good player in there, but. Um, you know, Connor were a brilliant uh, player anyway, weren't he? Uh, moving on to, you know, it's, oh, one thing I wanted to mention was his attitude. Um, the, the way that he said, you know, you'll hear in the interview in a second, but his ultimate um, role is defend first, then attack. And I feel like that's something this side needs. We need a little bit more solidity at the back. So <laughs> maybe a little a couple more defensively minded um, figures in there. And if it, it certainly... His attacking prowess is is impressed so far, but defensively, I think he's helped keep uh, plugging the the pockets of space on the on the half turns and in the the half spaces, and I think he's just enjoyed a, a brilliant start. So um, we'll quickly play you his interview and how he wants to uh, to come in and prove a, a point. Obviously, not starting too much at Gainsborough towards the end of his uh, term there. So uh, take it away, Lewis. Um, oh, it is disappointing, obviously, to lose, but I think performance, especially first half, could have been outside at half time, but we wasn't. Um, another big chance straight after half time, um, and then they got back into it a little bit. And when you don't take your chance, it's chances, teams are always going to have a going to have opened the game, and, and that's what they've done. They've done us on a counter attack and, and set piece, which is disappointing, really. Um, but um, we got a chance to put it right Tuesday. And you had a, a pretty good de- uh, debut. How would you revert yourself to them? Uh, yeah, I was pleased with our players, but look, I didn't come here to lose games. I wanted to win, so that was the most important thing. I'm not too fussed about my own performance. If I'd have played um, badly and we won, I'd have been much happier than I am now. So. And obviously coming down from uh, Gainsborough, how did the move first come about? <coughs> what did Pass say to you to entice you to come? Uh, he gave me a call. I um, saw that I wasn't... wasn't um, Getting a crack at it there, um, give us a call on it. Yeah, it really interested me um, the way the, the direction the club's going, um, and um, yeah, how they want to do things. And yeah, really, really uh, sold it to me. And uh, yeah, yeah, it got sorted pretty quickly. Obviously, we saw a glimpse uh, of you today, but for those that haven't, how would you describe yourself as a left back? Um, uh, God, that's a tough question. Uh, quite fairly defensive, um, defender first, and then. Like to get forward when I can. Um, the race. Since today, um, I like to get forward a little bit when it's when it's on. Um, but I'm always a defender first. Obviously, only being 23, you could say, um, you know, a young player. But you've got that experience in in the, in the football league, the apprentice of the year. How can your experience help the other lads in the side? Uh, yeah, they're quite quite an experienced group anyway. Um, I can just obviously bring experience from games where things quite aren't quite going to and stuff like that but no I think lads of lads are already quite experienced I think just to add to that just uh, it just helps the team as a as a whole I think. And as you mentioned you weren't getting in at games in the end how much are you looking forward to now just having a run of games at that left back spot obviously we had 
uh, Connor and he had left, and now that's that spot's yours. How much do you just want to claim that and you know progress us up the league? Yeah, I, yeah, I want to perform well, keep my place. Um, obviously, games was a bit of a frustrating time, um, so I didn't play with full backs, which is uh, my main sort of position. Um, so it was a little bit frustrating there. Um, but it, football's football, isn't it? I've got a chance to get a run of games now to the end of the season, and uh, who knows what happens after that. So yeah. Right then, Luke, I think a few people have already mentioned this, so I'll use the, which I'm, I'm going to guess is going to be a cliche now from, from his previous moves, but this new winger of ours seems a, a real good one. Yeah, uh, I, I think uh, he's, he's brilliant. I mean, he, 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 he's skillful. He takes players on. He's full of confidence. He'll run it to the byline. He'll put a cross in. He's not afraid to shoot as well. And he's great in the air. I mean, he's took me by surprise how good he is in the air. He wins every, nearly every header I've seen him. Like, there'll be a ball going forward out, out, out wide and he'll, he'll jump up with full back and win that header. And it's brilliant that because instead of it coming back, the, the possession coming back, we, 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 we can push forward then because then if he wins the ball, Macca or Liam Hardy or whoever can hold the ball up and then we've got midfielders that will come, that will bomb forward, you know, to get on the ball and, and then it sets us up for an attack. And having a player like that, uh, you can't beat it, and uh, I think he's going to be a good one for the future. It, uh, it both starts he's done so far, so good. He's looked he's looked dangerous. He was unlucky to not get a goal on Tuesday night. Um, I think he's, uh, but I th I'm really excited to see what he does between now and the end of, and, and the end of the season. Yeah, his directness is is something that's pleasing yeah. as well. The way that he runs at defenders, I don't think we've necessarily had too many players that will run at a defender, but then stand it into the middle and. Um, it, it it does bring a different aspect. Um, it's also a good competition for for the likes of Aaron, as well, and 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 Vaughan, who have played in them wide areas. Um, I, I think I think he's definitely definitely got people raising their eyebrows so far. Um, as we mentioned, the header from him was tremendous against Stocksbridge. Did a couple of acrobatic efforts on uh, Tuesday night, which you know you got to try your luck sometimes. And if they came off, then we'd be we you know we'd be running out of superlatives uh, to describe him. But yeah, the the way that um, it, it just seems determined. It, it, it seems hungry. Maybe um, not you know a bit like Zayn Akeem, who um, has sort of floated around non-league and not really had that consistent run in terms of games yet. Maybe that's why he, he's so keen to to impress and. Uh, we, we talked about, you know, we'll talk about Macca's goal uh, the other night. It all came from Ira's uh, pressing and winning the ball back, which allowed Macca to then go on and score. Um, I think his overall game, whether it's defensively in the air, he's got a great leap on him um, with the ball at his feet or with, just with quality of delivering. Um, I feel like he's, he's definitely going to be, um, you know, an exciting one to, to watch. And I mean, Gibbo. Uh, we're talking him up. Um, I think, uh, as Alex said, uh, Gibbo really needs to start taking some agent fees because um, he's a great scout for us. Um, but he, he 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 explained how how good he is and how frightening he can be when he's on the ball, and he just needs to find that consistent run. And hopefully, he'll get that with the Tigers. So, before we probably go and talk on uh, talk more about him in on, in Tuesday night's reflection, let's hear from him now uh, as he spoke to Luke Haverton. Started well to be fair, first half it was going good, just couldn't finish the chances off to be fair. Second half, fair, not too bad. Conceded quite early on, but that got us going again, got to go back and then we was going for it at the end and then to be fair, unlucky to concede like that. So late on, can't really get back into the game, not much time left. And, uh, it's a great goal for the equaliser, the head yeah. of the keeper. What, what, can you talk us through the goal? Fair, I just, I seen it going down that side, so I thought I'll just sitting behind the striker and it just fell to me so I tried to get a little bit of power behind it and see went in and uh, the tight it was a tight game today um how um, what what was the difference between the two sides would you say would you say there was much in it or was it i wouldn't say to be fair um we definitely created the majority of the chances better chances just just didn't take them that was probably the difference today they took their chances that they got and we didn't works up town six Sheffield FC nil. Um, it was so I didn't mean to leave a, a large pause in there, but it, it is sort of hard to believe after so many you know tight games or when we've struggled against teams below us in, in well 
far below us in the Premier League, obviously they're second from bottom. But it was from start to finish, the the tempo levels maintained um, were, were fantastic, weren't they, Luke? Yeah, I, uh, like I mentioned earlier in the podcast, by far our best performance. I mean, that was a good question. What you said about uh, when you when you asked Craig about uh, the level of performance from start to finish, how we kept that, maintained it. I think that were that that's that was just fantastic. Uh, like you said, we just we just didn't stop. We were running, we ran through brick walls with everything we touched. We're just golden. It, it, I mean, we we were linking play up fantastic. Uh, it could have been a lot more, you know. So there was so much, so many chances that we had, and it, it just shows how capable and frightening this team team are going forward. But not just going forward. I thought defensively we were solid. I thought we never gave him a kick up front, you know, and uh, they they couldn't, they struggled to get things going. I think they had a, a chance for Nathan Modest early in the second half, just before the sending off, that could have made it 2-1. Maybe it would have been a different game from them, maybe, I don't know, but I think, I, 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 I don't think so. I think we, I think we dominated throughout that game. They had little, little spells where they had some good play, piece of play, but I thought, I thought on the whole, we just dominated the game from start to finish. It certainly helps when you're scoring the first two minutes as well. Um, yeah. Great delivery from uh, Buttroyd. Um, we, we, we've been we've been scratching his head, haven't we, Luke, over the last few days and, and, and trying to decipher what happened in that first goal. And uh, I've looked at the VO now, and um, you know we've been on a, a, a quick shortcut to the dubious goals committee, and they've decided to give it. Well, they, I mean, Paz, uh, we've given it. To Danny Burns, uh, obviously Vaughan Redford flicked the ball on. It sort of was cleared off the line, cleared onto Burns and Ashton Hall, and then went over the line. Um, it, it, it certainly helps when you get off to a great start like that. And, and I remember it's sort of um, something we talked about after uh, we beat Stocksbridge at home, where we scored in five minutes. Where in previous games, especially in pre-season, we'd go for that early goal and once we got that, we completely dominated and it's the first time that we've seen this so far this season. Yeah, um, I, I think we, we've dominated games but not throughout the 90 minutes like we did on that on uh, uh, midweek. And I, I just think the closest we, we came to that dominance was the Cleefoot second half performance at Cleefoot. So, you know, that... That was good, uh, but we we did that. We, we performed like we did at Cleefolks against Sheffield FC throughout the ninety minutes, and I think, like you say, it was it was good to see. It's not easy to do it, you know. It's it, it, I imagine it would have took it took a lot out of them. I imagine they'd have been tired at, at the end, you know, because it would have took a lot out of them to to do that for ninety minutes. It's it's not easy, and uh, so hats off to them. Contrary to that, I I I don't think it would have took too much out of them. No. No. Um, just because of uh, well, we'll talk about the second half madness, but in the end, it felt like training. Um, the way that they yeah. keep, keep you know keep ball and Sheffield had sat off them, um, and we we just you know just kept the ball, made sure that they wouldn't have any chances. I know it's easy to sort of slack off when in them situations, and and our attitudes were professional throughout. Um, and you know, in, especially in the first, as I mentioned, actually. As I mentioned before about we've not seen it all season, what I meant in that is in um, we normally either have, well, we seem to have um, either a 45-minute period per game, which would be either the, the first full first half is, is, is excellent and the second we drop off, or the first half we start off poor and the second half we're fantastic, or we have a, a great opening half an hour and then a... Then we'll uh, slack off and then end with a fifteen-minute spell where we're really good. Um, so just to have that consistent ninety minutes um, was something that w- needed to click for us, and it did. And I feel like even without the two red cards, we'd have gone on to win so comfortably. Not maybe not six nil were yeah. they, but certainly three or four nil. Yeah, absolutely. Um... I just thought we we dominated the game, like we said. Uh, I think I think even if they would have scored that that chance in the second half, I, I still don't think that would have changed anything because I think we'd have just kept the uh, 
the intensity up. Um, I, I just thought we were just a better team. Just we just played the better football. We won all the tackles, all the headers. You know, like you said, we, professional performance, disciplined. And uh, it, as a, ti- a Tigers fan, it were it was great to just to watch it unfold. It it, it was uh, yeah, it was brilliant. I know uh, people hate the term, but game management absolutely spot on in my opinion. Um, and it, the, the 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 passing was progressive. Um, Paz highlighted it, and we've spoke about it for the last couple of weeks. The switch between Cody and Broadhead, I think, has been a massive stroke in terms of really exposing Cody's true credentials in terms of ball playing ability, um, and the way that you know going from a pivot to a, a advanced eight just suits him down to a T. Um, and you know even you know Jack Broadhead um, is, is sort of coming to his own, winning the headers. It's also stopped a lot of the over-the-top balls that we seem to get completely exposed by, um, especially in recent weeks. Um, I think having his height there helps us to either win win that header over, or he can drop into the back three and uh, drop in uh, drop in between the two centre halves and create that back three. Makes us more defensively sound. Um, let's try and pick pocket the second half then, because. I mean, it it was felt it was a weird game for us sat in the press box. Normally, we're quite on edge because of the uh, some of the defending um, or the you know the the well, we know how much the the game can ebb and flow between both sides. But we were sort of relaxed and and, and seemed to enjoy it and pick it apart. Uh, the two red cards, the the first one was, it, I think it was one hundred percent a red card. Just because I, now I've watched it back, I, I, I can fully confirm it because it was reckless. Um, the second, the the handball, we can't obviously see and on either camera, um, whether it's VR or the YouTube, I think his name is Match Days. Uh, he came down and did a video and, and, and watching it on that, you can't really decide, but the referee gives it. Nobody has any complaints. The, ref, the, the goalkeeper sort of just goes straight off. Um, so it, it, it probably gives a, a, an idea that it probably was handball. Um but the the way that we just took off after that was just impressive. Um, you, you'd probably expect it from a side, but to in terms of total dominance and total football, it, it, it was very rare for a workshop side to do that. Yeah. So second half was uh, it was great performance. Uh, both sending offs, uh, just as, uh, well. As, you can't you can't uh, argue against them. Reckless tackle, like you say, and the handball out the area. Uh, Lewis Butroyd's free kick uh, was well taken uh, after the second sending off, uh, and that kind of knocked the wind out of Sheffield FC's sails. Uh, and then uh, Macca's goal was unbelievable. We were behind that. We had a great view of it. Um, yeah, and I, I just thought, yeah, there was the own goal, uh, and I, I just thought it, it was a, it was a great performance from Worksop. Um, we just kept going to the end and. Yeah, it could have been a lot more. And uh, yeah, it, it, it was great to watch it. I know they were down to nine men, but obviously they still had a, a, a proper goalkeeper in there. So to, to not discredit us too much, we don't want to say like, oh, they had to stick an outfield in because you know, there's still a goalkeeper in there and he still made a couple of decent saves. Um, but the other goals obviously came through uh <clears throat> an own goal. Uh, Lewis Butroyd put a great delivery into the area. Uh, Tomo yeah. just could. He, yeah. I think he got under it. Uh, yeah. Seemed to flick it on to Tyron Senate Nielsen, who, um, despite his best efforts, was definitely across back into the area before Ben Turner. And as I said to everyone, not that Ben Turner. <laughs> uh, Sheffield FC's Ben Turner. Um, he ended up finishing it. A good low finish, um, I have to say, but it was into his own net. Uh, and then the last one, the sixth goal, was uh, Kianga's uh, cross. He, he seemed to have a, a couple of bright sparks into that uh, right at that left half space and getting in the area. And yeah. he, he put a low drive in. Picton's effort was saved, but Tomo was there to, well, I say saved. He caught it and then just seemed to to, to drop it. <laughs> yeah. um, and and Tomo obviously there, a, a true poacher, yeah. smashed it into the area. His first league goal of the season. A little bit of relief because I'm sure that'll have been eating away at his mind. Yeah. Uh, and overall, you know, we probably talked and and we could wax lyrical all night about this, but we'll uh, we'll uh, leave it with uh, Craig Parry. 
to talk about his thoughts on the game, which I'm, I'm pretty sure he was pleased with. Yeah, I thought another good performance here on this pitch. We've got a way of playing here now, and obviously we're building momentum here at home, uh, especially coming up, coming coming off two disappointing results away from home. Um, you know, so I'm really pleased with today's performance, uh, and, and you know, let's not go down the road of you know, you know, because they got two men sent off, we were two nil up, and I think full in control at game, and probably could have been more before that. So. Um, I thought it was a good performance and pleased for the boys because they, you know they've they've been a bit down in dumps and, and and I have to be fair and uh, you know over the last two performances because we really thought we could have you know built that momentum up but you know we take the three points today and we move on to the next game. How pleasing was it that obviously in previous games it's haven't been learnt or we've described the second half as, as brilliant or the first fifteen minutes or something yeah. like that. How pleasing is it that from start to finish the same level, same tempo? Yeah, I knew from minute one. I, I saw the attitudes coming in today. I think we had a couple of. I think the team talked today were a little bit more sterner and, and straight to the point and, and more simple instructions a little bit. Uh, we found two good patterns of play of, of, of working. Uh, I do believe the two new lads coming in have, has helped us with that as well. Uh, and, you know, I think we're a good all, all round performance from minute one. And, uh, you know, when you score in the first two minutes, I think it shows the attitudes that they've got that. You know how much they want to start well, how much they want to get at teams, and and what the attitude and, and what the demand of the standards are like. So, so yeah, it was a good good start for us. And even then, when they, you know, we got the third, and then they went down to ten, yeah, and then they went down to nine. Just how pleasing was it that we see you saw a, a ruthlessness from your side that yeah. something we've nef- not necessarily seen since pre-season. Yeah, definitely. I, I I think the ruthlessness comes though from from the the quality of the balls in, from the deliveries in. And also, I think the the combinations that I thought I thought from middle three, the middle three midfielders, they, they go a little bit un, unsung. I think I think they've been actually even even in the defeats, I think they've been really good. I think uh, we found a good combination of setting them up and and, and the, the passing and and the, and the, the quality of balls in into into the boys to allow them to score is is the most important thing because again, I don't I don't think we've been. You know, especially in the last two results, creating enough chances in the right areas, and uh, and now we've basically today, uh, you know, we've, we've put it completely on the plate for him and, and demanded that the centre forward stick it in the back of the net, not just centre forwards, you know, the the the, the old side, you know, we, we demanded that that if there's a chance there in the six yard box, you know, we, it gets it gets taken and, and they've done that today, being very clinical and like I said, it's not just being clinical because. You know they've been down to nine men. It's been clinical because they're doing the right things at the right time, and you know it's a the 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 result. Yeah, at the end probably you know down to them having nine men on the pitch, but the overall performance not. They also the quality from outside. Um, Lewis Butroy. Yeah. We mentioned how good he was uh, against Stocksbridge, but yeah. he was outstanding again today, wasn't he? Yeah, he's made a great start. Uh, the quality is there again. If you play in league football, you've got something about you, and I think. You know, I, I think I think we're gonna have. A, I think we've got a style of play for him that suits him ideally. Uh, it's, 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 you know, we've just been on about there. You know, the the he must have put in about twenty crosses there, and every single one is on the point and, and in in the area. But I think it's the timing of his runs that's 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 you know key to it all because. You know, he's not, he's not just stood out there waiting for it. He's, he's, he's playing a quality pass in there, then on the overload, and he's, he's on the moment, which, which is, is causing problems for opposition. So, yep, he's made a great start. The quality's there, uh, and he's, he's fitted into the group really well. Apologies, I, I lied there. We're going we're gonna to stick with uh, Sheffield just, just for now, just for about a minute and a half. Um, Stephen McDonnell. Um, obviously, the, the video didn't go out uh, post match, but we do have a, a, an exclusive interview for the podcast uh, with you uh, from from Luke himself. Stephen McDonnell uh, got his twelfth goal of the season. I hope the the beautiful South reference is a, a perfect ten, and he scored twelve. His twelfth goal of the season, a fantastic one in in that as well. Um, it, it's just so good to see how he's changed and adapted his. Um, his game so much just because obviously we've seen him before he liked to carry the ball we, we always said that he probably liked that little bit of intelligence in the, uh, the the last third to when to make the pass when to make the run when to do this when to that when to take the shot 
this season, his decision-making has been absolutely spot on. I think it's been drilled into him by Paz when to do these things and when to be a bit more creative. And, you know, he's re- reaping the rewards because he's passing it off to Liam Hardy or to, well, now it's Lewis Butroyd on the overlap. Um, and we're, you know, is <laughs> he, being in the right areas to finish these off, whether, you know, he's, he's probably not the most clinical uh, inside the the. the, the, the the first 12 yards of an area but he certainly knows how to get on the end of, of some things and and being just in the right space at the right time and it, it, it's overall a, an attitude change Luke I think the influence of Liam Hardy the influence of Craig Parry sort of shaped him into being a, a, just a you know utilizing his bullish runs and his his burliness and he, he, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm going to pass this on to you now because uh, obviously you've spoke to him it, it, it's just been Absolutely brilliant this year. Yeah, he's uh, he's been brilliant. Um, like we've mentioned uh, in a few episodes earlier about his movement and, like you say, his intelligence going forward. Now he's like a all-around uh, attacker because he can play out on the wing and he can also play up front. And uh, I think he's, like you say, he's not the most clinical of the players, but uh, uh, of players, but. He's, he's more clinical. I think he's improved on that side of his game. Or I mean, he's got what you said, twelve goals this season. I mean, it's good that because it's you know it's it's, it's not an easy league, and there's there's a lot of chances for other players as well to score. You know, so he get he he, he can put the ball in the back of the, the net, but he also he's created goals as well. I mean, I remember the ball for uh, Aaron Sennett Nielsen. I mean, that that were a great that were a great ball over, and that uh, that that and the goal on. Choose is going to be they're going to be in the goal goal of the seasons absolutely and he's he, he's created one and scored the other so it just shows how good he is as a player and uh, yeah there's my interview with him yeah I thought we played well I thought first half uh, we moved ball well uh, obviously got an early goal and I thought we dominated the game really and obviously second half they got a couple of men sent off which we obviously we just kept ball kept playing it wide and yeah I thought we dominated the game how good was it uh, for the tempo from start to finish that workshops uh, maintained. Yeah, well, obviously we knew. Obviously we lost Saturday, so we let fans fans down a bit. So we thought definitely we need to bounce back, and obviously the next run of games we need to try and put another little run together like we did before with six wins, um, and, and obviously then see where we are and try and catch uh, teams in playoffs. Yeah, and uh, your goal was uh, one of the contenders for the goal of the season. Uh, can you walk us through it? Yeah, he just opened up, um, and I seen keeper off his line a bit, so I thought. Just have a go and obviously outside at foot, it swerved away a bit and obviously top bin, so I'll take it. Like it. Uh, new lad Lewis on the left hand side, how good was he tonight? Uh, he, the runs he was making, the crosses uh, that he was producing was out of this world. Yeah, I think Lewis is a great great signing for us. He's, he's delivering to the box, from, not just from set pieces, but you know running down wing, uh, a, a bang on like, and I, I think it's... Um, He's really good on ball and uh, we, we, we're linking up well down there. Obviously, we've only played two games together, but I think uh, yeah, it could be a good partnership. Right then, we have another game on Saturday and it feels like another big game. It's 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 getting to a period and we've already lost and dropped enough enough points already that we need to keep running, keep getting these little runs together uh, and just you know try and somehow gain ground on that top five that just don't seem to lose. Um you know, we might see a little bit of a, a, a drop points this uh, this week with Stockton uh, playing. I think Liversidge or maybe Mask. So we'll we'll come on that later. We have to focus on our own game at the minute, and you know, take as many wins as we can. And Brighouse Town come into this game having won only two of their last ten league matches. Uh, those victories came in a three-two win over Dunstan and a three-one home success against Frickley Athletic. Uh, over that period, they have lost half of those fixtures, which has seen them drop from eighth, which was the position when we drew back in October, um, and drop down to 11th. And they are now 20 points off of the top five, which means they're 15 points off us. Great quick maths there. Uh, the last game was against Shildon, uh, and it was a 1 0 defeat for, um, well, their nickname is Town, but. Um, for Brighouse uh, on, on Saturday, uh, they lost out to an 87th minute uh, goal, which again, we did as we lost late, didn't we? Um, <laughs> we could have done we we showed them really dropping points there, but I've rambled on a little bit enough. Uh, Luke, what's your uh, thoughts going into this game? Yeah, um, 
I, I, it's important that we that we keep winning. Uh, I, I think this is a, a a good chance to get back on that one and run again. Um, I think, like you said, they're in poor form, so we can take some confidence into that. Um, but you you can never you, you've got to also not be careless. I, I mean, in these games, we've got to uh, we've got to win his own games, and I think uh, Craig feels like we're making uh, the. Uh, the home games are fortress, uh, the home, uh, and uh, I think the fans are enjoying seeing a lot better performances now in recent games than they were at the start of the season. I think uh, I, um, it, it'll not be easy because I mean, yes, they've lost the last three, but they've the very tight one nils or like that like they've lost by one goal to Liversidge, like you said, and Osset Town and and Shildon, which are all around the playoffs or in the playoffs, you know, or in the or top of the league in Liversidge's. Uh, terms, but uh, yeah, I just think it'll it'll not because I mean if they if if the tight tight get tight uh, results against them, I mean it'd be a decent side that can play football, and it'll be interesting to see how we get on. Will Powell seems to be able to set up at least a a decent side, a competitive side, and uh, I believe Brighouse and Pontefracts when Paz were there had many duels over the years and. Uh, I think one that that Paz will remember uh, is when they when Brighouse beat them in the playoff final, um, which I didn't see Brighouse go up because of some ridiculous PPG format <laughs> that saw only a half of the playoff sides across this level be promoted, which was strange and you know too many politics to to go into. Now, when we played them in October, we obviously drew one all. Um, it was a disappointing first start. I know you weren't there, Luke, so I'll, I'll do a yeah. little story time now to send everyone <laughs> to sleep. Uh, long, long ago in October at the Yorkshire Payment Stadium, uh, we started off uh, really poor. Um, we allowed Brighouse to... Well, they didn't allow them. They just they were more... Um, more smarter in that first half. They recognised that we started with a back three. They pushed their wingers in. They pushed their wingers from wide midfielders to wingers to to allow more overload on either wing. Uh, either wing, meaning that you know the two, the front two would pick up what two of the centre halves, and then one of the wingers would go on the other centre half, and the the other side. Um, sorry, the remaining attacker would be free to sort of. <laughs> sort of room and that's where they got their goal uh, in the end uh, through pressure, forcing a free kick and then scoring from that. Um, once we did recognise what they were doing, we sort of changed it a little bit before at half-time. We made a triple sub. Um, off the top of my head now, I think Adam Watson came on. Um, Alex Starshenko and Sam Aykroyd all came on off the bench. Made a great impact. We got a goal through Ben Turner, who has now departed. Um, the only time we're going to be allowed to say this and don't laugh, Luke, but a cross come shot um, went into the top corner, caught out the goalkeeper and we could have won it late, but I think Maka missed an open net and Cody hit the post. So we know how they are. They can be quite smart in terms of um, their setup early on. It's just going to be another game where um, we've got to be on it. We've got to take control. We've got to be progressive. We've got to be positive. We've got to Shut their threats down. Obviously, the forward Lawrence uh, Serendo, um, and if that's not his name, I've got to I've got to practice uh, it before the Tannoy cuts out on Saturday. Um, he scored thirteen this year. Scored against us, obviously, and he, he, he's, he's such a handful up top. He's big. He's burly. We 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 need to just you know it, it could be a real cat and mouse game, so to speak. Uh, yeah, I, I think. Um... I think it's going to be it's going to be. Uh, I'm expecting an end to end game. Uh, I think they're going to bring try and play football. I think they're going to try and make it hard for us and frustrate us. Uh, they've they've run away at Dunstan, which we haven't done this season. We've had two two goes at it. Uh, and can go. They can come away to big teams and get results. So we need to be. We, it'll not be easy. Um, and I just hope it's uh, it's a comfortable win for us. Um, whether it whether it will be that's a different story, but we'll we'll see. But uh, I think we need to keep that 
intensity and that tempo up from from Tuesday night. And I think if we do that, I think I, I think they'll 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 have to play well to get something out of the game because we'll be at them all the time if that's the case. So let's leave it with Craig Parry and Stephen McDonald to discuss Saturday's match. They've got they've got because got some good players. They're a good team. Uh... You know, they, they spend money in the right areas, and uh, and uh, they're they're obviously you know they're probably thinking they, they they could be in a high position at the minute in time. So I know we're up a, up against a, a tough opposition, and we're going to have to obviously be on his toes for that, and we're going to have to you know be aware of all their threats that that, that they give us and, and and the attacking threats that they've got. Uh, and we've got to, you know, counteract that and play our own game. And again, put on another performance here on our pitch, the way we want to play, make this our fortress, make this our home, and take the game to big house in the way that we want to do things. So, it's uh, it's a, it's, a, it's another key game, look, and it's another there's there's another three points on it. The next four games for us are, are, are pretty vital, and we, you know, we're here, we we're in the mix. We put a good performance on today, so let's enjoy that now. And then, you know, we'll we'll look at to, uh, tomorrow morning. We'll start planning for for Big House. Yeah, when we played Big House away, they they dominated first half, and then obviously second half we dominated. So um, we know they're going to be a tough opponent. So um, I'm coming here. They'll, they'll be up for it. But every game in this league's hard, so we need to obviously be on it and have a good tempo and try and win. So Luke, episode fourteen, um, it's it's over and done with now. Uh, yeah, uh, I think it's been a uh, up and down one way. Obviously, the Stocksbridge uh, game, and then obviously the Sheffield game. But uh, yeah, it's been a good one. Uh, it's nice to introduce Lewis and uh, Ira to the to the team, and uh, hopefully, we'll be speaking more about them in the upcoming podcasts. Obviously, now we're back on anchor uh, as we record. Obviously, hopefully, the the sound quality is a little bit you know, crisper without uh, an, an echo of the, the upstairs clubhouse uh, in there, uh, especially, <laughs> you know, we've got, we've got a result. So back to technology now that I'm about 40 mile, 45 mile away. Um, but we'll leave it there. Uh, make sure to follow us on Twitter for live updates of Saturday's game. If you cannot make it, if you can make it, come and cheer us on. Let's get behind the boys because, you know, with their support, where the crowds are starting to increase again. The, rep- uh, the results are coming. It's going to be one big push now towards the, the playoff positions. And if we do get in there, we'll have earned us right, uh, especially with a tough, tough April ahead of us. Um, but until then, you know, make sure to also like the Facebook page, like the Instagram page. As I said, we're, cre- we're creeping up to 2,900 followers on there. Uh, so if you could get us in there, that'd be great. Um don't forget to like the podcast, share it with your mates. You know, if you want to bore them to death as well, that would be appreciated. Um, and, and there's only one thing left to say, Luke, if you remember from last week. Up the Tigers. Yes. <laughs> Come on, boys. <laughs> <laughs>